requested that they couldn't come and they want to hear this, so I'm recording it. Okay, I'm sharing screen. Can you see my screen? Good. Okay, it is uh, now the it's recording and where we go. Okay, there are more people coming in. I needed to admit. So, great. Okay, people continue to come in. So let's just uh, let's just wait a few more seconds. All right. Okay, I think we are ready to go now. So there's a background noise. Uh, James, can you? Let's see. Oh, I can mute. Good. Okay, awesome. Yay. Okay, one more person coming in. Okay. Okay, good. If you're not speaking, please mute. And we are gonna get started now. Okay, welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jin Hong Zhang. Uh, I'm a CPA and a founder of uh, HZCPAs Advisors. And um, mm, hello, welcome. So first, let's have some fun, play some game, okay? And this will, you know, today I, our topic is R&D tax credit, but uh, I want to start with some context about our unique approach, how we do things. Uh, we believe that makes the uh, difference for, for your business. And so I wanna set up a context first. So let's start with some kind of game, okay? So let's first. Um, let's uh, read these uh, words. Newspaper is better than a magazine. Seashore is better than a street. Even young children can enjoy it. Birds seldom get too close. Rain, however, soaks in very fast. One needs a lot of room. How do you feel? So you may ask me, Jin Hong, what are you talking about? <laughs> right? We come to study R&D tax and you talk about these words. All these words are random, yeah? so you feel confused. I understand. So, Now let's read this again with a title, no. Kite. Newspaper is a better, better than a magazine. Seashore is better than a street. Even young children can enjoy it. Birds seldom get too close. Rain, however, soaks in very fast. One needs lots of room. Now, how do you feel? Start to make a difference, right? So that's what we mean by context. Context is decisive. And we will talk more about context later and give you more examples. So here, context, the context is a title. You have a title to a story that makes a difference. So see more people coming in. Let me see if I need to admit them. 
Uh, let's see how that makes any sense. Hmm. How do I admit them without? Okay. Okay. I had to stop here to admit people. So that's what we mean by contacts. And contacts is very important. And that's why I'm spending some time first to create a contacts for the RND tax credit. So give me an example of the story. So this is a financial statement, a budget, right? How do you feel? You say, well, there's nothing, no problem. I've seen that, right? It's alphabetical order. It looks, you know, it's alphabetical order. Now, how about this? We just could put some categories. That is start to make a little bit difference, right? So, we always start with context. So the context is really how you think, the big pictures, right? Like today's context is not about the IMD tax. It's really about you know, how you can build up your uh, technology company uh, and how you um, save money and earn more money, make more money, right? So the, the context is always something a little bit bigger than what we are looking at. So, and we can look at a different context, for example, if you look at this, right, what do you say? You say there's a finger. Well, we kind of say that, but what's the context when you say this is a thing, finger? The context is the body parts, right? Or you can say this direction. If the context direction, you say up. Okay, you say one. Well, what's the context? Well, number, right? So we will look at a different context. So when we start to look at a, an issue, we always start with the context. And context also creates habits. So here we are going to talk about mostly proactive versus reactive. So in accounting and finance, you know, this is for you guys, entrepreneurs. First of all, I just want to acknowledge you guys, entrepreneurs. I admire you and I love you guys. Um, just taking a challenge to create a business, that's huge. So accounting and finance and tax is usually the last thing you will think about it. You have other fires, you know, marketing, sailing, right? And these, these are, you know, it's totally important. On the other hand, as I have been working with entrepreneurs, I found that it is very important to develop a proactive contact, a, a proactive habit. And so everything we do is proactive, okay? And we will talk more. And that's inside of the context of really, you know, planning early, that will give you so much leeway, so much power to, to save just so much money. Okay? And it's, uh, that makes a huge difference. So really, really, we start to have a habit of proactive, being proactive. And then last, we develop systems. It's all about system, system, system. Always, if there's something not working, we will look at the system. Okay? And in the system, we start with context and then look at the habits and then develop systems. Now, a lot of times we do it the other way. We start with a system and then we don't have the habit to use the system even. Uh, so we, we will always start from the context. So the context, give me an example. Uh, this one, <laughs> I did the budget. Well, we don't have the money to, to afford the dog. Um, that's a default context we usually have. That's an example of a default context, right? So recently uh, I was helping a client, a startup company, a technology company, uh, you know, has no revenue yet. There's no balance sheet or no income statement. But we look at the value stream, value stream and we found that there's one important piece that's important for our business, which is the financing and the marketing part of it. And we identify a company to buy and they are willing to sell. And it's, it's a good deal. It's absolutely good deal inside the context of our business. It will save us at least five years if we were to build this business, build this kind of platform, the kind of customer base by ourselves. So that business is a good buy for us. Now we have nothing. We have nothing to offer. 
So the, the CEO and I, we went to um, the seller and we said, okay, can we offer you share? He said, no, uh, I just want the cash and I want to, you know, uh, leave the business and retire. Okay. I said, yes, we'll give you the cash. <laughs> I have no cash. We're talking about, uh, you know, uh, about $10 million. You know, as a startup company, we don't have that, much, that kind of money. So, but I tell him, yes, we can do it. We'll, we want to the business and we will buy. So I came home and I just write email to every colleague and call every colleague for uh, two weeks. And a colleague introduced another colleague and uh, eventually we settled with a banker who would give us a, a, a very good SBA loan, you know, 5.5%, 10 years amortization uh, with 10% uh, down payment. So we, we, we go out and raise 10% and, and again, we talk to the seller and uh, have the seller also carry a little bit. Uh, so it, it worked. So really when we, the context is decisive, you know, it, it's can we do it or can we not do it? Uh, so, you know, are you stuck with your constraints and say, hey, well, we, we can't take this opportunity. Or are you saying that, uh, this is really good deal. I want it and I'll find a way to make it, right? So you're really creating your future. And then another context I have is about yeah. tax strategies. So most of the time we are overwhelmed about tax. That's because we have a wrong context because we're trying to learn all these rules. All these rules are just you know, millions and millions of rules you can put all the books in a, in a room, but that's too much. And you get overwhelmed, you get lost in the details. So the way we do it, we just look at the strategies. What are the strategies? There are only three, there are only stra three strategies. All the strategies you can summarize in one of the three strategies. First strategy is to earn as much as possible tax exempt income. Example, the life insurance policy, you know, or um, later I will talk about uh, the small qualified small business uh, stocks, opportunity zone fund, right? These are, you know, huge, or just America seed fund. These are just no tax money. And take as much as possible the adjustment to income or the tax credits. So adjustment to income, for example, you all know 401k uh, or ESOP and um, tax credit, uh, renewable energy tax credit, for example. And uh, today's R&D tax credit falls into that. So that's called a tax credit, okay, fall into that context. And the last, and the most, it makes the most difference and most creativity happens here, is really about uh, transferring your tax liability to somebody else or defer to future years. So for example, um, everybody knows, you know, if you have a, a huge income this year, you could buy a um, fixed asset and uh, take it as a 179 deduction, right? So in business, say if you are, you know, making you have a million dollar income and this year, you know, you have to pay uh, quite some tax, 30%, say tax, state and uh, um, federal. Now, how do you avoid that $300,000? Well, you may think, okay, I have developed some IP, you know, maybe I can sell um, some IP to somebody. Um, or I can, oh no, I, I'm making, how to say, I may buy some IP. You know, at the year end, okay, I can buy some IP. Now it's a cost to me. Then I can reduce the tax uh, liability, right? And then another person, they have, say, if they have a, a loss, now, you know, they can, uh, you know, use that uh, to, to uh, offset as well. So this is an example of a non-tax 
earn as much as non-taxable income. So the opportunity zone fund, for example, if you have a, a capital gain now, you put it in there, you, it defers for five years and then you, it reduces to um, uh, reduce 10%. And then if you stay there in the fund for 10 years, all the new capital gain are tax free. And look at the number, you know, how it makes a difference uh, in 10 years. And they are everywhere. So here in Los Angeles, the opportunity zones are everywhere. Qualified small business stock, again, no capital gain. Um, yes, uh, the day before yesterday, I was uh, having a call with a company. We we're just starting, right? And we were talking about, okay, do we want to have a C Corp or S Corp? Well, S Corp, because C Corp is double tax. Well, I say, what's your strategy? Well, the strategy is to really, you know, exit in five years and, and do an IPO or uh, do a direct, deposit, a direct uh, listing at uh, NASDAQ. Great, then C Corp. Well, C Corp, first, you can qualify uh, for the qualified small business stock. And they say, okay, uh, how about the double tax? Well, if that's the goal, if you are building a company to sell, you're making money on the stock increase. So don't pay dividends. And even don't make any profit. Don't make any profit. Why pay tax? You don't need to pay tax. Just like Amazon did. They invest all the money in R&D. Just build up your company. And you get these R&D credits. It's all built up. And even when you start to have a, a income, you don't have to pay income tax because you have all these credits sitting here. Okay. So if you look at this C-Corp, it gives you much better um, position. So the C-Corp is if you know, it's acquired after September 27, 2010. And after, after issuing the stock, after the round of uh, uh, capital raising, your asset is less than $50 million, which is most likely the case for most of our technology uh, startup companies. The benefit is huge. So when you sell it, when you have a liquidation, in five years, if you hold it for five years, in five years when you hold it, you can take the great of $10 million or 10 times your basis, which you know, in a general term, your investment. So $10 million, you know, that's, you, you are saving, let's say 25% capital gain tax, you know, state and federal, uh, we're saving $2,500,000 tax, capital gain tax, right? And it, this is greater of a $10 million or 10 times. So if the 10 times is a whatever, you know, uh, hundred million dollar, then uh, you save $25 million uh, tax. <laughs> so another opportunity is a uh, National Science Foundation's America Cedar Fund. And this one, you know, I will talk to you uh, more when we go to the IND tax. So that gives you $1.75 million the first stage is $256,000, and then the second stage is a million dollars. And then after that, when you start to raise capital or when you have revenue, they will match you 50 cents to $1. Okay, so this one, later when we go to the R&D tax credit, the criteria is so much similar. So if you qualify for the R&D tax credit, most likely you also qualify for the America Cedar Fund. And this is completely free money. They don't take any credit. Uh, they, they don't take any uh, 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 equity at all. It's just free money to, to support you. And then this one against ESOP. ESOP is wonderful. It's a tax shelter for both employer and employee. And um, uh, it's also, it's a financing source because you can, you can use the ESOP trust to, um, to, to get a financing. Okay, somebody asked, can a nonprofit organization take advantage of this tax credit? 
No, IND tax is only for for profit. Are any of the tax credits or funds available to non-profit? No, no. So the ESOP, it is also an exit strategy because you can gradually sell your ownership to your ESOP. So it's also a succession plan. You know, you can identify some good people and uh, train them uh, within your organization. So this give you some example of the context. The context is not just getting R&D tax credits. The context is how you build up your company and are saving as much as possible uh, money. And now, and then we talk about the being proactive, how important it is pro being proactive, because if you look at the context, it's about the story. It's how you write your story. It makes a huge difference. And how you frame it, it makes a huge difference, right? So you, if you can think up front as early as possible, and then you can design the system to reflect your story. So when you think of the system, you really think top down. First, what do I need? If I need to apply for the IND tax credit, okay, what are some of the IND credits requirements? Later on, I will look. And then how we can design it into the system so that when the time comes to apply for the tax credit, I have the information already. And then you develop the C financial statements and you know, the, the financial statements could be standard three statements or could it be very unique to your need and to your investors. And then you establish a solid financial and accounting foundation, start from the chart of account. And when you build it, you build it from bottom up. You start with the chart of account and then you have the financial statements. Then you get what you need. So again, how do you create these structures, right? So the context is decisive. So here are some examples of how you can actually design your accounting system. You can use this. This is one example of a model. Uh, this is uh, uh, from uh, uh, Singularity University. They call the exponential model. You have a massive transformative purpose. And then the left side is a structure and the right side is an outreach. And you can use that as a model to even design your chart of account to report so that you know, you know, as the author of this called Exponential Organization, Salim uh, Ishmael said, if you have about four, four features of this model, your business is gonna be exponentially growing. And this is also an example, the values, value chain, right? It's like, like we were looking at the, the organization I was talking about uh, that we purchased the company. Because we look at the value chain and we found that uh, this critical piece is gonna be making huge difference for our value chain, right? So, and you can even develop your financial statements based on the, chart of the value stream. And here, when you design the chart of account, this is a little bit technical, you know, you have different dimensions. Uh, you have, say, you know, the first one you see account, everybody knows it, and then the second one, business, right? You have software, your hardware. And so when you are looking at the IND tax credit, okay, uh, you know, you're writing story, how much I spend on developing my software, how much I spend on developing my hardware, boom, numbers already there. And then maybe it's a project. You may, you know, have project for this project, that project. You know, you can also have another uh, field to tag the data. So, with that said, I want to now get to what is R&D tax credit? And does your company qualify? Does your work qualify? How much can you claim? What's the process? And how can we work together? So what is the Federal Research and Development Tax Credit? So it started from 1981 uh, because you know, the innovation is very expensive, but uh, Innovation is important. It helps uh, develop a business and you know, hire people. So the government developed this incentive for innovation. But the problem is, at that time, the law says uh, you get these credits and you can use it to offset income tax. 
Well, most of startup don't have income tax. <laughs> you know, most of them even don't have income, right? So that's the problem. So it excluded the real innovative small businesses, the small startup companies. So, and then Obama did, Obama did something in 2015 during the Protecting Americans from Tax Hike Act. So that law says startup can offset the payroll tax. Well, that's awesome because even we don't have uh, income, we have to pay payroll. So this is great. So, and then also it becomes permanent. And also it uh, clarifies the definition of qualified research uh, because you know, the law was in the 80s, but later on, um, you know, we have the computer and software and all of these, now it all qualifies. So are you a qualified startup? So a qualified startup, so in the tax year, so let's say we are doing the 2019 tax, in the tax year, your gross receipts in your tax return has to be less than $5 million, okay? And then in 2015, your gross receipts, prior year to 2015, your gross receipts would be zero. What it means is that you have, you know, started to have uh, revenue only in five years, only in the last five years, okay? So that qualifies you as a startup. Now, if you don't qualify as startup, you can still use the income tax offset, okay? But you, you can qualify for uh, the payrolls offset. So the qualification, there are four parts. Now these four parts uh, are kind of technical word, but uh, I'm gonna try to explain it in a very plain English language. So the first is permitted purpose, so product, Process, remember process also qualify. Software, formula, technique with increased function, performance, reliability, quality. So what it is says is, okay, we develop something new and a new does not mean completely new from scratch. It also means improvement, okay? So that's what it means. The second elimination of uncertainty. It says capability or method of development or improvement appropriateness of business component design. So what it is say, it is says is uh, basically there's a risk, there's uncertainty. I'm not sure if I do this, it will be successful. That's what it says about it. So, and then because you know, the law, the incentive is to incent you to reduce the risk. And then the process of experimentation. So it means you have to try, it's a try and error, you may fail. Okay, you have to try this alternative, that alternative, and then you may fail several times, you will success. Okay, so that's what it means. And the last but not least is technology in nature. So activity must rely on physical science, biological science, engineering, computer science. So it's something science. It's something engineering science. It's, you know, you can call hard science. It's not just uh, uh, developing a culture, um, something humanity does not work, okay? It's, have to be some, some kind of science. So all of these, if you meet the requirement of all of these, then you qualify. So how much can you claim? So first is W-2. W-2, now W-2 is only for the W-2 wages in box one, the gross wages. Uh, FICA, all of these. Uh, that's not qualified. So W-2, box one, your gross wages. Okay, that's 100% qualify. Uh, and then contracting. Well, contracting, you can qualify for 65%. Now remember, contracting, you can't be outsourced to uh, out of the country. It has to be done in America. Uh, same for the wages, okay? And then it could be an independent contractor that you 1099 them, or it could be just a company, you know, you even don't 1099 them as long as the work is done in America. And then supplies. Supplies, non-depreciable, tangible, personal property. Um, 
you know, any, anything that is depreciable, like, a, you know, computer, furniture, building, no. Supplies uh, that you need, it's all qualified, okay? That it's consumable, it can be used, you know, it's done, you don't uh, put it on your assets, it's just expense right away. And that also includes the computer software, uh, software subscription, all of these. So how you, how you estimate if you qualify, how much you estimate? Basically, you add these three categories together and time 10%. That's about your credit. So you ask me, Jin Hong, you know, should we pursue this or not? Well, let's look at the numbers. If you have, say, about $100,000 expenses and then 10% is $10,000, it will cost you about $1,500. Uh, to get this process, now well, that's worth it. But uh, you know, if you have probably you know only fifty thousand dollars and it costs you um, about uh, you know thousand dollars, you probably say, well, uh, it probably does not worth your time. Okay, so that's how you calculate. Mm -hmm. So our process, as we say, you know, being proactive. First, we take a lot of time on onboarding and planning process and we really design the system and then we implement the system uh, and then we review you know we review several times to, to upgrade and then your when you when you submit in the tax software so we again we are later on I will tell you our approach is we use technology as much as possible so um, that will reduce the cost and make it uh, accurate so we will get this form and then we will um, uh, file the tax return together with the, the IND tax credit uh, form. So now I want to talk about uh, whether we are good fit, how we work, whether we are good fit. So the way we do it, uh, we are very technology driven. Okay. Um, so we actually partnered with a, uh, a company called uh, Claris. So they developed a SaaS software, made it very easy. Uh, you needed to just enter your projects and the related expenses. And if you are working with me, uh, we will actually uh, help you uh, enter some of these numbers and uh, generate these numbers. We will design the system to have these numbers proactively. So. We are very much technology driven. Um, we don't, I don't uh, spend the money, you know, on fancy offices. I work out of home and uh, just meet on Zoom. Okay. So that's how we work. We're completely technology driven. If you have to meet face to face, uh, we're not uh, your partner. And it's, it's very important. Accountant is like your business partner. Okay. It's very difficult to change and it takes a long time to understand you you know, understand each other and to learn each other's business and adjust the personal styles, communication styles, okay? So technology, we are absolutely technology driven and uh, most of you guys here are technology entrepreneurs, you know, so maybe this is very much fit for you. And the pricing, our pricing are very, very reasonable. So usually the way it works is uh, I will work as the CFO and as the quarterback. So it's like a, I'm, you know, in the, in, in comparison to doctors, I'm like the family doctor. And then if there's a specialist, we will use a specialist. So, uh, so IND is a special specialty. So we partner with a, a SaaS company. Okay. Now I charge a, a monthly fee, a proactive monthly fee, um, anywhere from 500,000 to, you know, whatever, um, based on your uh, company situation. And uh, if you are a startup, a pre-revenue and, and if I, you know, we, we talk and we like each other and we, I have confidence in you and in your business that you can um, have a, build a scalable business in five to seven years, we can go IPO and you know, I can take, take stocks as well. So uh, now if, uh, if you are already my client, um, the software company, uh, I'm very grateful. Um, they give us a very good price. So $500 plus 10% of the credit. That's very, very good. So if you're already my client, I don't add any more percentage on it. I just pass on to you. I say, hey, if we are applying for this credit, 
this is the bill that uh, the SaaS company will charge me, I'll pass on to you. And it's really a true partnership. Uh, we handle all the touch points and the inquiries from the IRS, and we stand behind it. Um, so when I say we actually, the software company, uh, they will stand behind it, even if it's audited. Uh, if you audit it, you know, they will stand behind it. So it, all the documents, we dot the I and the cross the T's, it's all secure. And now this part also, I want to say one thing. Accountant, as we see, accounting and tax is an art rather than a science. So you have to understand your risk profile and you have to interview accountant and find their risk profile, see if it match, okay? That's, that's how it will work. Otherwise you will have clash, okay? Um, so my risk profile, let me tell you, our risk profile, let's say zero to five is conservative and six to 10 is aggressive. We are five, okay? So we are still conservative. We do not want to trigger audit, even though we plan everything as if we'll be audited, but we don't want to get audited because that's kind of waste a lot of time. Even if nothing, you know, you don't owe the IRS, but it takes a lot of energy and time, okay? Um, so the way we do it is we want to maximize your benefit without triggering auditing. That's why, you know, we work with you starting with the context, starting with your story. And that's why we plan proactively your system. That's why we want you to be engaged early on, not until April 15. You know, we want you to start now for 2020 and we will develop the system. We'll look at the system now. We will, we will ask you to write the narrative in the text software now, okay? And then we will develop the chart of account now so that uh, all the year, all year long, we are recording your information to the right pocket. So with that said, if you're interested uh, to work with us or if you have more questions, uh, here's my contact information. And uh, you, the best way is you go to my website, hzcpas.com, and then click schedule, schedule now and book a time with me and then we can talk on Zoom. That's the best. So with that said, uh, I'm gonna check the chat box, see if you have questions. And then also we have uh, Etsy from the software company here. Uh, so if you are interested to have him, have her do a little demo, uh, and I promise you, it's so easy. Like uh, just they made this software so easy, you, you know. So if you if you are curious about that, uh, you want her to do a little demo, she can do it. Otherwise, you know, I will just check the chat box and see if we have questions. And then after that, uh, we'll just open up. You know, you you can just uh, ask uh, verbally. Um, so let's look. Let's look at the chat box. Okay, right now there isn't any in the chat box, but uh, you can start typing your questions. And you can also say if you're interested in looking at the software in the, in the chat box. Okay, somebody said yes. How about other people? Okay, I think, let's say if there's another person say yes, I'm looking at the SAS software. If another person say yes, we'll do it. Anybody else would like to take a look at the SAS software? Okay, Etsy. So Etsy is uh, uh, from the, the tax software called uh, Claris. Um, so Etsy, 
you want to go ahead and share screen. I think you're muted. Yes, I'm here. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Good. So yeah, I'll just do a brief overview here. Let me try to move uh, our faces over to one side so I can see the screen. Um, so if you come into the software, the first thing you'll see is just uh, a main page with all of the tax years that you have either completed in the past or that you intend to complete in this first round. But just assuming you're a, a new client for the first time, you'd come in here and see uh, the 2019 credit year. Um, initially, the, the front end questions here are just largely questions that actually Jin Hong will help you answer and probably will already have information on your company regarding. So it's just uh, your company name, basic information about the company, overall revenue uh, for the last several years of the business, and then some estimates as far as payroll and your projected federal income tax estimate. That's just to help um, Jin Hong gauge how quickly you guys can use the credit. Um, and then we'd hop into the actual R&D project. So initially, depending on how many projects you have, we would uh, identify those on the front end and list those here uh, in the software before we give you access to the software. And then you would just go through and simply identify the innovation going through overall definition of the innovation. This is just a really high level information on the background of why you underwent the activity, overall the significant improvements you made in the tax year, Generally, what is it that you created? Is it a product, process, technique, or invention? Uh, do you intend to hold it for sale or not? And then just a brief overview of the principal participants in the development of the project. Uh, finishing off this section of the innovation, we then go through and list out any excluded activities. Uh, basically, Jin Hong mentioned that you know any activity done outside of the United States wouldn't qualify anything that's general business adaptation um, would not qualify any duplication or reverse engineering, social sciences, studies related to efficiencies, management operations, things that are not relying upon hard sciences, anything that's routine or ordinary data collection or routine or ordinary quality assurance, and then anything that's funded research. If you are accepting any grant money, or anything that you are worked for hire, that would be excluded from the, the expenses that we can include. So that's the front end of the application. And then we dive right into the four part test. Jin Hong went through this, but we just have to make sure to substantiate the work and ensure that you meet these four parts. The so first one is the permitted purpose, was the product processor take entirely new, what did you improve upon? Uh, a brief explanation of the sciences that you relied on. One or more of these four sciences will be acceptable and a brief explanation of how you used them. Elimination of uncertainty. You have to have a yes uh, uncertainty in one of these three areas. Uncertainty on your capability, the methodology you used, or the appropriateness of design and then a general uh, description of that uncertainty and whether or not there were other options you considered before entering the R&D. And then finally, a description of the process of experimentation you went through. This is not an exhaustive list of experimentation processes, but uh, usually when we're, when we're talking about startups and technology companies, we're seeing some sort of agile software development. Um, and then as far as, you know, you know, was there more than one alternative? Describe any process of experimentation that you used to eliminate the uncertainty. And then, you know, any routes that you took that ended up failing. Even if the, the product you went to develop failed and you didn't develop it at all, it's still time and money that you spent to produce it. So therefore it's still qualified. So once we've verified that the work actually qualifies, then we hop over into the expense category. You can open these up one section at a time. 
Jin Hong mentioned that he'll help you with uh, this information because he'll have access to this information. Um, and then you would just go through and list out each of the employees, uh, their titles, their overall compensation, and then what allocation of time they spent on the specific project. Is it, if an employee spends 80% or more of their time on R&D, you can round up to their full salary amount. We'll also track what state the R&D occurred in because there's also state R&D tax credits that you can apply for. Um, most of you guys are probably located in California and California has a really good state incentive if you are income tax paying. So you'd go through and list these employees. Uh, we do have the option to import this from a spreadsheet. Um, we do the same thing with the contracting expenses and the same thing with the supply costs. And then we'd uh, have you go ahead and upload any substantiating documentation. Uh, so you can select documents here and upload those or that would be information that Jin Hong could help you supply here just to tie out your wages, the invoices for your contractors or supplies. Um, and then on the back end, we would, um, our, our team of software and tax credit specialists, we would help just verify that all of your responses do in fact meet the tax code. And then we prepare a tax form that Jin Hung would include in your annual tax return. And then you'll begin claiming the credit depending on how, uh, how, you, how you can monetize it, whether that's through the payroll company or uh, as a reduction to your federal income tax. Great. Thank yeah, you, Effie. So let me check to see if there was any questions. Yeah. So there were two questions that uh, we can answer. Sure. So, uh, for nonprofit, no. Nonprofit don't qualify for this credit. Um, I think somebody asked the fee. So the fee is this, okay? So, uh, the software company, Essie, they were so uh, graceful that uh, they give me the price of $500 engagement fee plus 10% of the credit, okay? So that's their wholesale price to me. And as I said, my favorite engagement is be your CFO. And then this, I'll just pass along, okay? I'm not making any money. So, but I will work with you. So that's, that's my goal. Okay, because I want you to take advantage of this credit. Now, if you can work with uh, uh, companies who specialize in SE only, uh, specialize in IND only, you know, you can talk to SE and just work with them directly. That's not a problem at all. I don't have to be involved and the SE will charge you whatever they charge, you, right? It will be more than Jin Hong will charge you, so <laughs> you might as well work with Jin Hong. <laughs> The, the key here is really, you know, about the approach, you know, we want to have your overall, overall um, strategy and, uh, and proactive and uh, really develop the system up front so that we have these uh, numbers accurate in all these uh, buckets. So when it's time to apply, you know, we just enter the number and it's all solid. If it's audited, okay, we have all the backup uh, traced to each transaction. Awesome, any other questions? Uh, at this moment, I think we can open the mic. Um, I think you guys can unmute yourself if you want to ask a question or any comment. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions or type your questions. So what's your fee in process? So as I said, the fee is, you know, uh, my fee, usually um, if it's a revenue generating company already, you know, usually you need it to be making about $100,000 to engage us and we'll charge uh, about, you know, start with $500 uh, 
a month, and that will take care of all your strategy planning, bookkeeping, and the tax filing. There's no charge at the end for, for tax uh, uh, filing at all. So if you really look at this, it's really worth it. And because, uh, you know, other people probably will charge you $5,000 just to do the tax return, right? Um, but because we do it proactively, every month so we are, the book is clean, you know, we reconcile it. At the year end, uh, your book is clean because most of the time, uh, people are just spending time cleaning up your book, uh, reconciling your bank. But if, if the book is clean, it takes no time to just enter it uh, into the form. Um, so really, that, that's how we do it, okay? Uh, and if you want to work with us, uh, uh, only if you recognize this, this approach, and that's the only way we work. You know, you, you like to be proactive and develop systems and, uh, you know, work on it on a monthly basis. Okay, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, speak whatever question you have. How many companies have you helped to get this tax credit and how many of those got the credit? Um, so I'm sure as you can tell me that they worked with a lot of companies. I just started with two companies. So I'm newbie. <laughs> yeah, so our, our company, we've done, um, I think, just under 400 studies since our inception. Um, we are a startup ourselves. We consider ourselves a startup. We were founded in 2016. Uh, we have a team of obviously software developers, but also um, R&D tax credit specialists that are actually doing the review on the back end of these studies. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm newbie to the R&D credit, uh, but uh, I'm, you know, I've been doing uh, accounting and this system, the approach, proactive, strategic, proactive and systematic approach I have been developed uh, over my, um, you know, over 20 years of uh, uh, experience uh, on the ground. And I did uh, extensive interview for my, software partner and um, you know there are companies out there and they their presentations are not that clear you know they have a lot of marketing things but not to the point about what qualifies and that and their charges you know anywhere from uh, what uh, 30 percent to you know 40 yeah, percent 25 percent yeah. to 30 yeah, 35% to 30, you know, 33% one third of it. Um, so um, I, I really like to work with a small company um, like uh, Claris and, uh, um, and I really like to work with a, a simple way, a simple tool like the SaaS software they developed. And uh, yes, you know, it, uh, it, it, it takes you to actually enter these information, uh, but I think it, it have to take you anyway. You know, the other companies kind of interview you and you talk, but they have to write anyway. They have to enter into the system, into whatever software they have, or just write in their Word file, an Excel file anyway. Um, it takes more time and they charge you more. I like small companies and I like technology. That's why I work with the uh, Clarus. And Arlene, I think, had another question. Uh, how many companies have we worked with and then how many of those got the credit? So we don't, 95% uh, of the time, we're not going to sign anybody until we know that they are qualified. So I'd say if they go through the study, every single one of them gets the credit. The other thing that's important to note is that the IRS doesn't go through an approval process for these credits. They are really entrusting that you are using a subject matter expert in order to claim this credit. Uh, so the, it's really important that who you go with uh, knows what they're doing because there's, while Jin Hong does a really good job of explaining it from 
a simple standpoint and that's what we hope to do because we do rely on your participation to enter the information. There is some complexities on the back end that you need to understand in order to claim the credit and do it safely um, without any audit risk. Is there a minimum size firm or payroll that you work with but not below? See, I was uh, saying, you know, you probably should have at least $100,000 qualified expense, right? And these made up of uh, payroll plus the contracting plus supplies. Um, $100,000, we say it because, uh, you know, you spend $1,500 and you get a $10,000 back. So that's kind of worth your time. Otherwise, yeah. I would say it is not worth it. Well, we will hand out here as as long as you want, and you, if you don't have questions, you feel free to leave. Um, and if you want to hand out and you want to open your mic and uh, speak to us to your specific questions, feel free as well. Thank you, ever, everybody, for taking the time to uh, learn this and really acknowledge you, entrepreneurs, for being out there creating business opportunities and creating wealth for you, your family, and for the world. And if there's anything we can help, uh, um, whether it's related to R&D tax credit or not, uh, feel free to contact me, book a time on my website. Thank you.